Okay. So, uh, in my other discussions and dis geometries, as we found out um, about different cutting, one of the things we found out was that my markers didn't mark very well. But here is a shaft that we want to turn. And we're going to be stepping it down to some diameter. When we go to turn it, of course, this is, this is looking with it ro rotating around this way, not with it uh, before we were looking into the cut. Yeah. So this is rotating this way. So our, as our tool bit moves, our, our cut that we had looked at before was basically this. What we looked at before is this part here is uncut. This part being the red tool is cutting. And so what we had looking at it from above here was right there. It's, it's cutting, just one cut, one big chip coming off essentially, which is, is a starting point. But that section is really only maybe a thousandth of an inch thick when you first move into a part. Right. So what we have going on as we move over, though, is we have a shape that this square part of our cutting tool would make. So if we made this square shape all the way over and the tool was perfectly flat here, they would both continue to reinforce a perfect square and pretty shape. But that's not, not real. Because this is not a perfect square and we don't even want it to be a perfect square. As we showed before, when we do things, we want clearance angles so that the only part that's touching really is our cutting. So we have a bit of a clearance angle coming back there also. So now that we have a clearance angle coming back there, we realize that what we have up here is actually a point if we just make it sharp. So then what we would have is as the machine moved, we would have essentially threading. It would be making V's every, as the, the came around and the tool cut, our surface would be V's. Right. Which is not going to be real smooth. So the old idea and what you will see with old high-speed steel tool diagrams of this is how a tool is made, they'll have like a, uh, this would be your, the front of, well, it'd be a little bit steeper, but this would be what they'd show for the front part, top view of your right hand turning tool the tool that's turning and working on the right hand of the part. And they'd give a, a big radius on it if it was a finishing tool. And a roughing tool um, wouldn't normally have as big of a radius. Although, which, which is where it's, like I say, it's just, this, that's such old, it doesn't really work with the carbide tooling that we're normally using. Um, their, their idea of a roughing tool a lot of times was a sharper tool, actually. Okay. Um, but a sharper tool will wear away quicker, too. Um, I, I just, I don't like the old standard tools that much, but I thought I'd go ahead and diagram one of them. Anyway. And then they'd have, on the other part of this, they would have the left hand. I should draw the tools in red again. But anyway, we know. Yeah. They're red. Um, you would have a radius over here. Okay. But the radius itself is what I wanted to talk about today. And so if we're moving along and we had a sharp point, and in between here is going to be our feed rate per revolution, which is normally how a lathe is set. So our feed rate per every revolution, let's say that that was 20 thousandths. So we're going to have 20 thousandths between those marks. You know, if we have a pretty good sized radius on our tool, then instead of having V's, we will have rounds that overlap. Oh. So it will come out flatter. Yeah. 
and it will smooth it won't be flat you still have some a little bit of a threading is always going to be there but it's going to be flatter right and so a bigger radius is going to smooth more gotcha um that's that's the general idea now there's a couple other things that radius does a larger radius we are in our part uh, we're just, uh, let's go back here. A larger radius means, quite honestly, that we're cutting more area. Okay. So if we're, and it would continue on like that. So if we're cutting more area at once, we need more strength in the machine, more possibility for vibration. And the vibrations will happen in this direction, and what they'll do is push the part away. As they push the part away, you'll start getting other lines that will show up this way as it vibrates. Okay. Um, if you get, anyway, too small, it starts ridging. It looks more like a pointed tool. Too big, it will vibrate because of load sometimes. We also can affect this with our feed rate. Um, which is, is part of how feeds and speeds is another thing we'll get into more specifically on a, on a different discussion with these while it overlaps with how the tools works, work, of course. But we'll do that on, a, on a, a different run. At the same time, though, we'll give some basics. If we're doing a normal, not hogging roughing, but just normal cutting... Um, up to close to finish or, or just don't need a super finish, you're going to be running somewhere in the uh, five thousandths to ten thousandths range per revolution, somewhere in there. Ten thousandths will normally start breaking your chips a little bit, but not real good. Okay. Um, five thousandths will give you a pretty good finish, maybe not you know super, but pretty good finish generally. You're going to normally want a radius, if you have a choice, of around 264 fourths. And I say 264 fourths instead of reducing it to a 164 fourth, because the tools, when we get the inserts, are sized according to 64 fourths of an inch radius. Right. So it would, be, again, be a tool with the two on the end. That is the most common, most normal to use. Now... The other reason to go for a larger radius is because it has more fracture strength and it's more forgiving. If you chip out, um, if we have a tool that comes up here, it's got a small radius, and of course our cut would match with that. But if you chip out this small range here, we make a little chip here, well, a little chip like that, okay? And that little chip can cause this insert to not want to cut at all hardly. Right. Okay. But if we have another one, it's still got that same chip, but the radius is out here because the cutting is done over more of the area. It will still cut with this imperfection. Okay. It will cut a little more cutting happens here, a little better there. This part that's not cutting, the two will just kind of mush over and help it pull. Um, those two cutting well, it will pull past that bad spot in the cut. As far as it's not best for, uh, for a final finish, but it, it works. It's more forgiving if it gets torn up a little bit. So plus the extra strength, it's less likely to get torn up in the first place. The combination of both of those, that it's more forgiving if it gets smaller, small tears, and it's less likely to get torn up makes it good for a welded surface yeah. or a first, uh, you have something that was torch cut, your initial surface. Sometimes we have tools out here in the shop, we go routinely um, up to a four, we've got some eights out there even. Uh, 864 is a big, pretty big radius for an insert, so uh, 864, that's uh, eighth of an inch radius. or 
you know, an eighth of an inch radius would be the same if it was round. It would be a quarter inch, quarter quarter inch diameter. Yeah. So it's fairly, fairly good piece of rock. But even at that, there's times when we get into something where it's really nasty, old. Um, other than, oh, I use more and more the uh, the surmats and stuff help a lot with that, but. There's times when you have something that's running out a half an inch out around, it's been torch cut, it's just this thing. And instead of hand grinding it and making it clean to save your tooling, what you do is you go and grab a brazed on insert, a brazed on carbide. And you take a brazed on carbide tool that might be a one inch big old tool that's out there with a piece of carbide in the front of it that, or, and it's been worn and whatever we'll just take and just grind the whole front of it round yeah and so now we have a half inch radius and when it gets a little chunked up you just go over and grind it some kind of round again but it takes stuff off and that's part of where you buy all this the surplus old carbide tools and just use them up sometimes yeah but they it will it will take more abuse and hammering on this really ugly unknown thing than most your you'll knock the holder apart sometimes on a insert you'll, you'll tear the holder the screws everything apart before you'll tear up this old oversized braze tooling and so that's the the radius i didn't uh, i talked about it some as we were looking at inserts back there but hadn't really mentioned it uh directly on the cutting action I thought I should bring it up so it could be spliced in before you go into the you know as kind of an introduction to the part two that really is a filler to the part one okay yeah so any other questions any makes sense that makes sense to me um, does your radius then play a role in uh, threading too you just want a smaller radius um Generally in threading, when we're actually threading, we don't have a radius. Okay. We just use a very... Okay. It, it does actually... The, the, there's, there's two things. There's the... You shop grind um, a high-speed steel. You just grind it sharp and ignore the front. Yeah, okay. Um, if we uh, get one of the little tools, it will have an a imperceptible little radius on the front if we get one of the brazed-on tools. Okay. Most of the inserts will have a little flat across it. Technically, you're supposed to have the correct size flat for the thread. But in the real world, and they make a series of tool of inserts that have a threading point. I'm having a hard time drawing this. It's a combination of a threading point, and then it has a part over here that cuts off afterwards. Um, no, that's not. Anyway, it's got part of the V. It, it's got more than, than the V. It, it comes around, and it shapes... I forget, oh. but anyway, it chases in, in, in a second time. Yeah. And these are for a specific thread per inch. Yeah. And those do a beautiful job, but you got to buy one for every thread per inch. And if we're doing that, we might as well be going to a cha chaser or using our CNC, in which case there's other tricks we can do. Um, although there's, there's times for it on a CNC. Most of the time, I'm not a big fan of that. I like a tool that you can pretty much use for everything. Right. And... Uh, that's just more where I go to. And I'm glad we found our real... Yeah. Now we now we have cutters and cutties.